Ignatius of Antioch, Greek, Ignatios Antiochias Ignatios Antiochias, c. 35 c. 107, also known as Ignatius Theophorus, Ignatios Ho Theophoros Ignatios Ho Theophoros, lit. The God-bearing, or Ignatius Nerono lit. The Fire-bearer, was an early Christian writer and bishop of Antioch as the successor of St. Peter. En route to Rome, where he met his martyrdom, Ignatius wrote a series of letters. This correspondence now forms a central part of the later collection known as the Apostolic Fathers. His letters also serve as an example of early Christian theology. Important topics they address include ecclesiology, the sacraments, and the role of bishops. Life Nothing is known of Ignatius' life apart from what may be inferred internally from his letters, except from late spurious traditions. It is said Ignatius converted to Christianity at a young age. Tradition identifies Ignatius, along with his friend Polycarp, as disciples of John the Apostle. Later in his life, Ignatius was chosen to serve as Bishop of Antioch. The 4th century church historian Eusebius writes that Ignatius succeeded Evodius. Theodoret of Cyrus claimed that St. Peter himself left directions that Ignatius be appointed to the Episcopal See of Antioch. Ignatius called himself Theophorus God -bearer. A tradition arose that he was one of the children whom Jesus Christ took in his arms and blessed, although if he was born around 35 AD, as supposed, then Christ had ascended approximately five years prior. Ignatius' own writings mention his arrest by the authorities and travel to Rome to face trial. From Syria even to Rome I fight with wild beasts, by land and sea, by night and by day, being bound amidst ten leopards, even a company of soldiers, who only grow worse when they are kindly treated. Ignatius. Transfer to Rome is regarded by scholars as unusual, since those persecuted as Christians would be expected to be punished locally. If he were a Roman citizen, he could have appealed to the emperor, but then would usually have been beheaded rather than tortured. Alan Brent has suggested that Ignatius was involved in conflict with other Christians and was executed for the capital crime of disturbing the peace. During the journey to Rome, Ignatius and his entourage of soldiers made a number of stops in Asia Minor. Along the route, Ignatius wrote six letters to the churches in the region and one to a fellow bishop, Polycarp, Bishop of Smyrna. In his chronicle, Eusebius gives the date of Ignatius. S death is double A 2124 2124 years after Abraham i.e. the 11th year of Trajan S reign AD 108 Ignatius himself wrote that he would be thrown to the beasts and in the 4th century Eusebius reports tradition that this came to pass which is then repeated by Jerome who is the first to explicitly mention lions John Chrysostom is the first to allude to the Colosseum as the place of Ignatius' martyrdom. Contemporary scholars are not clear that any of these authors had sources other than Ignatius' own writings. After Ignatius' martyrdom in the Circus Maximus, his remains were carried back to Antioch by his companions. The reputed remains of Ignatius were moved by the Emperor Theodosius II to the Tychium, or Temple of Teich, which had been converted into a church dedicated to Ignatius. In 637 the relics were transferred to the Basilica di San Clemente in Rome. Veneration Ignatius' feast day was kept in his own Antioch on 17 October, the day on which he is now celebrated in the Catholic Church and generally in Western Christianity, although from the 12th century until 1969 it was put at 1 February in the general Roman calendar, in the Eastern Orthodox Church it is observed on 20 December. The Synaxarium of the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria places it on the 24th of the Coptic month of Koyuk, which is also the 24 day of the fourth month of Tahesis in the Synaxarium of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church, corresponding in three years out of every four to the 20th of December in the Julian calendar, which currently falls on the 2nd of January of the Gregorian calendar. Topic: Letters. Topic. The following seven letters preserved under the name of Ignatius are generally considered authentic as they were mentioned by the historian Eusebius in the first half of the 4th century. Seven authentic letters The letter to the Ephesians 
The Letter to the Magnesians, The Letter to the Trallians, The Letter to the Romans, The Letter to the Philadelphians, The Letter to the Smyrnaeans, The Letter to Polycarp, Bishop of Smyrna, writing in 1886. Presbyterian minister and church historian William Dool Killen asserted none of the Ignatian epistles were authentic. Instead, he argued that Calixtus, Bishop of Rome, pseudepigraphically wrote the letters around AD 220 to garner support for a monarchical episcopate, modeling the renowned Saint Ignatius after his own life to give precedent for his own authority. Killen contrasted this episcopal polity with the Presbyterian polity in the writings of Polycarp. Most scholars, however, accept at least the two Ignatian epistles which were referenced by Origen, and believe that by the 5th century, this collection had been enlarged by spurious letters. The original text of six of the seven authentic letters are found in the Codex Medicio Laurentianus written in Greek in the 11th century which also contains the pseudepigraphical letters of the Long Recension, except that to the Philippians, while the letter to the Romans is found in the Codex Colbertinus. Some of the original letters were, at one point, believed to have been changed with interpolations. The oldest is known as the Long Recension, which dates from the latter part of the 4th century. These were created to posthumously enlist Ignatius as an unwitting witness in theological disputes of that age, but that position was vigorously combated by several British and German critics, including the Catholics Denzinger and Heffel, who defended the genuineness of the entire seven epistles. At the same time, the purported eyewitness account of his martyrdom is also thought to be a forgery from around the same time. A detailed but spurious account of Ignatius. Arrest and his travails and martyrdom is the material of the Martyrium Ignati which is presented as being an eyewitness account for the Church of Antioch, and attributed to Ignatius." Companions, Philo of Cilicia, Deacon at Tarsus, and Rius Agathopus, a Syrian. Although James Usher regarded it as genuine, if there is any genuine nucleus of the Martyrium, it has been so greatly expanded with interpolations that no part of it is without questions. Its most reliable manuscript is the 10th-century Codex Colbertinus Paris, in which the Martyrium closes the collection. The Martyrium presents the confrontation of the Bishop Ignatius with Trajan at Antioch, a familiar trope of Acta of the Martyrs, and many details of the long, partly overland voyage to Rome. The Synaxarium of the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria says that he was thrown to the wild beasts that devoured him and rent him to pieces. Ignatius's letters proved to be important testimony to the development of Christian theology, since the number of extant writings from this period of church history is very small. They bear signs of being written in great haste and without a proper plan, such as run on sentences and an unsystematic succession of thought. Ignatius modeled his writings after Paul, Peter, and John, and even quoted or paraphrased their own works freely, such as when he quoted 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18, in his letter to the Ephesians, "...let my spirit be counted as nothing for the sake of the cross, which is a stumbling block to those that do not believe, but to a salvation and life eternal." Letter to the Ephesians chapter 18, Roberts and Donaldson translation Christology Ignatius is known to have taught the deity of Christ. There is one physician who is possessed both of flesh and spirit, both made and not made, God existing in flesh, true life in death, both of Mary and of God, first passable and then impassable, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Also in the interpolated text of the 4th century long recension, but our physician is the only true God, the unbegotten and unapproachable, the Lord of all, the Father and begetter of the only begotten Son. We have also as a physician the Lord our God, Jesus the Christ, the only begotten Son and Word, before time began, but who afterwards became also man, of Mary the Virgin. For the Word was made flesh. Being incorporeal, he was in the body, being impassable, he was in a passable body, being immortal, he was in a mortal body, being life, he became subject to corruption, that he might free our souls from death and corruption, and heal them, and might restore them to health, when they were diseased with ungodliness and wicked lusts. He stressed the value of the Eucharist, calling it a medicine of immortality. Ignatius to the Ephesians chapter 20 verse 2. The very strong desire for bloody martyrdom in the arena, which Ignatius expresses rather graphically in places, may seem quite odd to the modern reader. 
An examination of his theology of soteriology shows that he regarded salvation as one being free from the powerful fear of death and thus to bravely face martyrdom. Ignatius is claimed to be the first known Christian writer to argue in favor of Christianity's replacement of the Sabbath with the Lord's day. Be not seduced by strange doctrines nor by antiquated fables, which are profitless. For if even unto this day we live after the manner of Judaism, we avow that we have not received grace. If then those who had walked in ancient practices attained unto newness of hope, no longer observing Sabbaths but fashioning their lives after the Lord's day, on which our life also arose through him, how shall we be able to live apart from him? Let us therefore no longer keep the Sabbath after the Jewish manner, and rejoice in days of idleness. But let every one of you keep the Sabbath after a spiritual manner, rejoicing in meditation on the law, not in relaxation of the body, and not eating things prepared the day before, nor using lukewarm drinks, and walking within a prescribed space. And after the observance of the Sabbath, let every friend of Christ keep the Lord's Day as a festival, the Resurrection Day, the Queen and Chief of all the days of the week. Looking forward to this, the Prophet declared, To the end, for the eighth day, on which our life both sprang up again, and the victory over death was obtained in Christ. Topic. Ecclesiology Ignatius is the earliest known Christian writer to emphasize loyalty to a single bishop in each city or diocese who is assisted by both presbyters elders and deacons. Earlier writings only mention either bishops or presbyters. For instance, his writings on bishops, presbyters and deacons Take care to do all things in harmony with God, with the bishop presiding in the place of God, and with the presbyters in the place of the council of the apostles, and with the deacons, who are most dear to me, entrusted with the business of Jesus Christ, who was with the Father from the beginning and is at last made manifest. He is also responsible for the first known use of the Greek word katholikos, katholikos meaning universal, complete, and whole, to describe the church, writing, Wherever the bishop appears, there let the people be, as wherever Jesus Christ is, there is the Catholic Church. It is not lawful to baptize or give communion without the consent of the bishop. On the other hand, whatever has his approval is pleasing to God. Thus, whatever is done will be safe and valid. It is from the word Catholicos, according to the whole, that the word Catholic comes. When Ignatius wrote the letter to the Smyrnians in about the year 107 and used the word Catholic, he used it as if it were a word already in use to describe the Church. This has led many scholars to conclude that the Appalachian Catholic Church with its ecclesial connotation may have been in use as early as the last quarter of the first century. On the Eucharist, he wrote in his letter to the Smyrnians, Take note of those who hold heterodox opinions on the grace of Jesus Christ which has come to us, and see how contrary their opinions are to the mind of God. They abstain from the Eucharist and from prayer because they do not confess that the Eucharist is the flesh of our Saviour Jesus Christ, flesh which suffered for our sins and which that Father, in his goodness, raised up again. They who deny the gift of God are perishing in their disputes. In his letter addressed to the Christians of Rome, he entreats to do nothing to prevent his martyrdom. Pseudo-Ignatius Epistles attributed to St. Ignatius but of spurious origin their author is often called Pseudo-Ignatius in English include Epistle to the Tarsians Epistle to the Antiochians Epistle to Hero, a deacon of Antioch Epistle to the Philippians The Epistle of Maria the proselyte to Ignatius Epistle to Mary at Neapolis, Zarbus First Epistle to St. John Second Epistle to St. John The Epistle of Ignatius to the Virgin Mary Topic. See also Topic. Apostolic succession Christianity in the second century Early centers of Christianity History of Early Christianity List of Patriarchs of Antioch Apostolic Fathers Catholic term Topic References Topic 
Topic. Citations. Topic. Topic. Sources. Topic. Holy Letters and Syllables, The Function and Character of Scripture Authority in the Writings of St. Ignatius contains biography of Ignatius as well. Doctoral Thesis University of the Orange Free State 1997, Dutch, PDF topic Further reading topic topic External links topic Works by or about Ignatius of Antioch at Internet Archive Works by Ignatius of Antioch at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Early Christian Writings, Online Texts of St. Ignatius Letters Archived, Non-Archived Link The Ecclesiology of St. Ignatius of Antioch by Fr. John S. Romanides St. Ignatius Opera Omnia by J.P. Migni, Patrologia Graeca with Analytical Indexes Catholic Encyclopedia, Spurious Epistles of St. Ignatius of Antioch Ignatius Writings in the Anti-Nicene Fathers Greek Text of Ignatius Writings 2012 Translation and Audio Version Authentic Seven Letters and Martyrdom of Ignatius St. Ignatius of Antioch at the Christian Iconography website Here followeth the life of St. Ignatius, Bishop from Caxton's translation of the Golden Legend Colonnade Statue in St. Peter's Square Ignatius of Antioch 1919 the Epistles of St. Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch. Translations of Christian Literature. Translated by James Herbert Srawley, 3rd ed. Society for Promoting Christian Knowledge. Ignatius of Antioch, 1919. Crafer, Thomas Wildard, ed. The Epistles of St. Ignatius, Epistles in Greek. Issue 10 of Texts for Students. Society for Promoting Christian Knowledge.